What's going on, Colts Nation? I appreciate you joining me for another video. Where today we are, of course, going to be talking about the schedule release. If you saw any of my posts yesterday uh, here on YouTube, you know I just had some stuff going on right between the day job, have some family down here in Florida visiting. So, you know, been a little busy, um, but going through the schedule release and what we're looking at, what I know, the Colts got one primetime game. And that one primetime game isn't even in Lucas Oil Stadium, right? They just keep doing it to us. We're not getting primetime games, not getting primetime games at Lucas Oil Stadium, which is crazy. You know, I feel like in primetime games, I feel like that's when Colts fans show up at Lucas Oil Stadium the most, right? It's been a little notoriously quieter than most stadiums at Lucas Oil Stadium over time. But primetime games, Andy usually gets up for that. So we only get one primetime game that's going to be in New York against the Jets in Week 11, which should be a good game as long as, you know, the quarterbacks are able to stay healthy. And, you know, most teams, um, as long as we're you know, mostly healthy up until that point, I think that could be a really good game between the two teams okay but then when you go and look at the schedule what we're looking at again we have one more away game than we do home game this season and we have no international games this season okay so the rest of these gonna be played one o'clock you know the, with the one primetime game sunday night football the rest of these are one o'clock games starting in week one on September 8th, that's when the Colts open their season. They open it at home against the Texans. Okay, a little unfinished business. We didn't have AR in the finale last season. We didn't have a few guys in that finale last season. So we're getting guys back. You know, we're healthy going into week one. As long as that's the case, we're going to see Anthony Richardson versus C.J. Stroud, the rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year against the what should have been Offensive Rookie of the Year. So should be a great matchup in week one. This is one that I think the Colts can definitely win, especially at home. Traditionally in this matchup, even when both these teams are good, the Colts will win at home, the Texans will win at home, except for when T.Y. Hilton was playing because, you know, T.Y. Hilton, you know, NRG Stadium is the house that T.Y. built. So as we go forward, I think that the Colts have a good chance of winning that game. So go ahead, chalk that up as a win, right? If we're doing early predictions, go ahead, chalk that up as a win for me. Okay, then week two against the Packers. Packer Jordan Love was really good last season. Okay, and this should be a good game. This one's at Lambeau. The Colts going to Lambeau for the first time in a long time. And when it comes down to it, I think the Packers are good. And with all, you know, just putting this out there, we're at the point of the offseason. I don't know the finer details of all the different rosters yet, right? I don't know. I know of a lot of people on the Packers. I don't know, you know, all the different moves that were made, everybody that they have slotted into to starting position and second, uh, you know, second role position. So, We'll see how that goes. I'll look further into this, of course, as the offseason goes and before we get into the season. But at the current moment, I just feel like, you know, from what I know of the Packers, we should be able to beat them in week two as long as, again, Anthony Richardson stays healthy. All 17 of these, okay, we're just going to say this. All 17 of these are projecting that our stars stay healthy this year. Okay, but then you look at week three, we get the Bears. And this one's at home against the Bears. And it could be an exciting game. Bears could be good. If Caleb Williams is actually good in the NFL, like the pieces around Caleb Williams are really good, of course. The defense there is good. Matt Eberflus coming back to Indy. So this definitely could end up being a really good game. AR against Caleb Williams could be exciting. Um, but go ahead and give me the Colts in that one as well, starting the season 3-0. and oh. And then you get the Steelers in week four. Four. This one is in Indy, and this is earlier than we usually get to Steelers. Steelers are usually an end-of-season uh, matchup for the Colts. This one's going to be beginning of season. Russell Wilson, now the quarterback there, could end up being a really good game. Uh, the way the history has gone with the Steelers makes you want to say Steelers, but go ahead and give me the Colts to start 4-0. and and, and to be completely transparent here now, there's a chance the Colts start Two and two here. There's a chance the Colts start three and one here. Um, but that's where I think the, the basement is for them is going to be two and two in the first four. Okay, then you continue to look ahead. Week five, we go into Jacksonville, and we all know how going into Jacksonville goes for the Colts. We have won there in a really long time, just like we haven't won in week one in a really long time. So that's what makes the week one game against the Texans scary. 
a game that the Colts really need to win. In the grand scheme of things, Colts need to be able to beat the Texans there in week one. Um, but the Colts haven't won in week one in so long. And then you have the game against Jacksonville in Jacksonville. And the Colts haven't won in Jacksonville in so long. And, you know, my question is, does having AR healthy, would having AR healthy change the fact that we can't win there? That's what I would hope. But we can't win in Jacksonville. It's been a long, even when we're better, like clearly better than Jacksonville, we don't win there. So go ahead, give them the L there. We're going to call that four and one for now. In week six, we're in Tennessee. So a couple road games in a row. This one in Tennessee. The Titans, I just don't think – I think they're the worst team in the AFC South. I think they're okay. I think they're like a 7-10, a 8-9 and, and nine kind of team. Um, I don't think they're fantastic. I don't know how Callahan is as a coach. I think Mike Vrabel could probably get 10 wins out of this team. I don't know if Brian Callahan is going to be able to do that because I don't know if this team is really that talented. We're really going to have to see. I know – you know, they definitely made some additions that could help the team, right? Sneed going in there at corner. They bring in Ridley at receiver and Boyd. So they could definitely be better. But are they going to be a team that's really going to compete with Will Levy's at quarterback? He could have some good games. Is he going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league? I just don't think that's going to be the case. So go give the Colts the win against Tennessee. Then you have Miami. Miami goes to Indy this time. Last couple times it's been the Colts in Miami. Miami coming to Indy this time. And I think that the Colts could pull this one out. All right, but then you have, you know, the threat of the track team that is the Dolphins and then just running away from our young secondary, which is completely possible. So, you know, this is a tough one. Honestly, I want to say it could be the Dolphins again, just because those weapons on offense care, but their defense – not very good. I don't think their defense is going to be good. So the Colts could end up putting up a bunch of points. That could be a really, really high scoring game right there against the Dolphins in week seven. And I honestly like I because I like our defense more than theirs. Both offenses can put up a bunch of points. Go ahead, give me the Colts in that one, actually. So going into the game with the Texans, we could be sitting at six and one. Okay. We could also be sitting at four and three wide a range of things that could happen to the Colts here. But then going into week eight in Houston, go and give Houston that one. Okay, I will do that. Good teams. They're like if we're playing other contenders, like I usually give those to the home team. That's just how I work. Um, so go ahead, give me uh, or go give the Texans the win in that one. And at this point, Colts could end up being six and two. Then you go to the Vikings. We should beat the Vikings in week nine, but we all know what happened the last time we went to Minnesota. So anything is possible. Okay. But I really do think we should be able to beat the Vikings, the bills in week 10. It's an interesting game. The bills come to Indy this time. We don't have to play in Buffalo this late in the year. So I think this could end up being a really good game. I think the Bills will take a step back from what they've been in years past, though. And I think the Colts are going to be able to beat them with what I think we are this year, the way the roster is, the way the coaching is for us. I think we can beat the Bills. Like, yeah, does that seem lofty? Yeah, but I think we could do it. Now, the Jets... In week 11, this is a very interesting team. If Aaron Rodgers is on the field, how much does that really change the Jets? I think their offensive line got a lot better this year. I think they worked on things they had to work on. They got better wide receiver as well. So the Jets are going to be a major threat. This is in New York in November on primetime. Okay, it's going to be week 11 of the 2024 season. It's going to be Anthony Richardson's first primetime game. Think about that. Anthony Richardson, one primetime game this year, first primetime game of his career against the Jets, against Aaron Rodgers. And so that should be a really good game. Um, but again, a contending team like that, they're going to be really good. Uh, go ahead and give me the Jets to win that game. Then you look at Detroit coming to Indy this year. Week 12 is the Detroit Lions. And for me, this is another I think this is going to be a great game. Two teams that should be contenders this year, in my opinion. And for me, because of culture at home, they're getting the nod. Okay, I think the, the Lions are going to be really good. I think they're a tough football team. Um, but I think the Colts are going to be able to put up a bunch of points, and I don't know if the Lions' defense is quite there yet to be able to keep up with the Colts. 
And then week 13 is this year's Patriots game. It's a little later than usual. Get them in December 1st here, um, but it's at New England. This time we're going to Foxborough instead of the Patriots coming to us. And this, I think, I think we should demolish the Patriots. This is one where we should blow the doors off the Patriots unless uh, the weather doesn't really cooperate. So we've gone through 13 weeks. Every single week we've had an opponent. I just said, December 1st, Patriots. We haven't had that bye week yet. That bye week is as late as it could possibly be this year. We get a week 14 bye week. This happened just a couple years ago. Okay, for whatever reason, the Colts continue to get late byes. They had a a bye week last year that was more in the middle of the season. But for the most part, you look at the last, you know, four or five years, they get very late, and even the latest bye week. This is not the first time they've gotten the latest possible bye week. In a 17-week season, they don't get, well, I guess 18-week season, 17-game season, 18-week season. They don't get a bye week until week 14. So they're going to have to grind through it. Those last couple games, right, the the Jets, the Lions, the Patriots, those games are going to be grinders. That's where we could see the Colts get into situations where, you know, it looks like they might be fatigued. Guys, you know, getting hurt, having to, you know, take a couple of games off. That could be the part of the season where we see something like that shake out, right? But then we come off that bye week in week 14, and in week 15, we go to Denver. Last time we were in Denver, it was one of the worst games I ever watched. It was in 2022, week five uh, in Denver, Matt Ryan versus Russell Wilson, and it was it was bad. It was all bad. That game was terrible to watch. So hopefully this one's better. Bo Nix, I think, could be good in the NFL. Um, you know, I don't think we don't really we didn't really talk much about quarterbacks here on this channel because we didn't need to. But I do think Bo Nix uh, is going to be a good NFL quarterback. I think him with Sean Payton could be good. They just got to build up that team around them. But I just don't think the Broncos are going to be good this year. I don't think their roster is that great. Um, and Sean Payton, obviously still trying to instill you know his his discipline his culture and everything that he's trying to build there I just don't think they're there yet so go ahead give us the win against the Broncos I think we beat Titans at home in week 16 and take both the games against the Titans this year then in week 17 we have the Giants we are in New York once again uh, this time against the Giants in week 17 and this is one where Giants could be good Giants could be trash. Giants <laughs> likely could be trash. I've been a Daniel Jones guy for a long time, but um, you know, you look at the stats, he really only had that one good year outside of that. It's been really bad, plus some injuries. They don't have Saquon Barkley anymore. Not sure where they're going, so we should be able to beat the Giants. Just, just go out on a limb and say we should beat the Giants. And then at home against Jacksonville to finish the season, a game that could end up being very important, depending on how many games the Texans win, depending on how many games we win, right? If it goes the way we're talking about here, could be very good for us. Jacksonville at home. We usually do pretty good. We lost that game last year because it was week one. The Colts don't win in week one. Um, but it was also, you know, AR uh, was in and out of the game. He ends up going out of the game at the end. We were gonna probably going to lose anyways. I think we were in a situation where we were going to lose anyways. Right? It was AR's first game. This time, it's going to be the last game of the season. And AR is going to have his chance uh, to finish this game and to be able to finish the season and to get us into the playoffs. Now, the way this is all gone, I had us losing what three or four games, right? Winning twelve or thirteen, um, which seems lofty, right? For for what we have, but you think about last year. We've talked about this on this channel. Just in case you haven't heard it, um, it is pertinent. Even if you have heard it, it is pertinent for this part of the conversation. The fact that. Without AR, okay, with Gardner Minshew and a lot of other guys injured last year, the Colts won nine games. They went nine and eight, almost won the division. We've talked about before how if AR stays healthy, just AR stays healthy, we win 11 games at least, probably 12, maybe 13, okay, because AR showed he was very ready for the NFL when he came in. He was doing his thing. And 
you hear the QB coach talking about AR um, and how he's taking the next step, not just on the field, right on the field. He knew what he was doing, but it's even in the meeting room preparing where he's taking the next step and he's starting to, to become a leader in that meeting room. So, you know, everything, the growth from Anthony Richardson is going to be really good this year. Having him on the field is going to be game changing. Of course, we want Anthony Richardson to stay healthy. We want Jonathan Taylor to stay healthy. We need our stars to stay healthy. Juju Brent Stouts, Flowers need these guys to stay healthy. As long as our main guys, for the most part, are on the field, every team is going to have injuries. Stars are going to be hurt from pretty much every team. We need to be able, right, champions have to have some luck to go with it. You have to be able to stay healthy. If we can do that this year, I really think we're a 12 or 13 win team, especially with the schedule that we have. It could be difficult though. There are some difficult matchups here. I don't want to take away from some of these teams like the Lions, you know, we could easily lose that game and end up being a 10 win team. So there are again, a wide range of things that could happen for the Colts, but I think we could be a 12 win team this year. I'd like to know what you think about this. How do you think the Colts would do uh, the way the schedule lines up. You let me know your prediction down in the comment section. What games are you excited about? Are you planning to go to any games, man? Whatever it is, you let me know down in the comment section. I'm hoping to get to Indy for that Texans game uh, in on September 8th. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to try to get to a game this year uh, up in Indy. But live in Florida could be a difficult task, you know. So, again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I appreciate you stopping by for another video. And, of course, subscribe with notifications on as we continue to have content on this channel throughout the offseason. Going to continue to want your guys' opinion. So, again, subscribe, notifications on. Appreciate you stopping by. Of course, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.